everyone welcome back to simply learns youtube channel today we are going to talk about anova in microsoft excel and i will walk you through a step by step guide on how to perform this in excel but before we dive into that let's first take a quick look at what anova really means anova which is analysis of variance in excel is a statistical method to compare the means of three or more groups to see if they are significantly different from each other it helps determine if variations in data are due to real differences or random chance it's useful because it helps in finding differences as it shows if groups have different results it saves time as it tests all the groups at once it clears insights and helps make decisions based on our data for example if a teacher wants to compare the effectiveness of the three different teaching methods on students math scores they can divide the class into three groups of 14 students each using anova the teacher can analyze the math scores to determine if one teaching method is truly better or if the differences in scores are due to chance now that we have a basic understanding of what anova actually is let's get into excel and see how you can easily calculate this using the built in tools but before that do unlock your career in data analytics with simply learns data analyst certification course this comprehensive program in collaboration with ibm covers everything from sql python r to data visualization tools like tableau and power bi you will work on real world projects attend live sessions with industry experts and earn certifications from both simply learn and IBM. Start your journey with hands-on learning, master the latest tools and boost your career with industry recognized credentials. Enroll now and take the first step toward becoming a skilled data analyst. Check for the course link in the description box below and pin comments. I have a sample of data in my Excel to perform the ANOVA over. There is an amazing feature in Excel that many people are not even aware about is a data analysis tool pack. If you have not come across this word, the data analysis tool pack in Excel is an add-in that provides advanced data analysis tools for statistical and engineering calculations. It simplifies the complex data analysis task by offering the built-in features to perform various statistical tests and data processing without needing to write formulas manually. So we need to ensure first if we have activated the tool pack correctly. So for that, we need to go to the file and then options and then we have to move to add-ins and here in the manage uh, you have to choose for the excel add-ins and click on go after that you need to click on this analysis tool pack and click on ok now when you see the topmost bar that is the data if you click on this data you will see a data analysis button over here now we are all set to perform the analysis of variance to perform this, I will click on data analysis button and from there I will choose ANOVA single factor and select on OK. Now here in the input range, we need to enter the range of the cells containing your data. For that, I will click on the upper arrow button and highlight my cells that are containing the data. The next option is grouped by depicts how your data is arranged in your sheet. If it is arranged in a column like, like I have arranged choose columns and if it is arranged in a row, go for the rows. Now here in the labels in the first row, if you have labels like mine, like group A, group B and group C, do tick this button. Then alpha is generated and here in the output options, this is where you want your result to be returned. The first option is the output range is where you can specify a particular cell where you want your result to be returned. The second option will enter the answer in a new worksheet and the third option will enter the result in a particularly new Excel file. I will choose the second option and will name it as ANOVA. Now we have got this result. Within just one click, you can definitely get the ANOVA single factor results. Now I will explain each factor, what it means, count some average variance, SSDF, MS, etc. in the next PPT. So the first table depicts a summary of the data available in the analysis. So the first one we have got is count. Count is the total number of data points in each group. Here in group A, group B and group C, we have 14 data points. Now moving on, we have sum. 
Sum is the total value if we add up all the values in each group. So the sum of group A is 958, sum of group B is 1093 and the sum of group C is 1280. Now moving on, we have average. Average is the sum divided by the total number of data points in each group. So the average of group A is 68.42, the average of group B is 78.07 and the average of group C is 91.42. Now, lastly, we have variance. Variance is the average of the square differences from the mean. Now, the variance of group A is 141.34, the variance of group B is 209.60, and the variance of group C is 119.49. Now the second table here is divided into three groups, the between groups, within groups, and total. So the first row depicts the result when the between rows are classed as a source of variation. The second row depicts when the source of variation is within the groups. And the, finally, the last row is just the total. Now we will see what each column represents. So the first one we have is SS. SS stands for sum of squares. Between group SS is the total variation explained by the differences between the groups. Within group SS is actually the total variation within the groups due to the random error or individual variability. And the total SS is the sum of the between group SS and within group SS. So the between group SS over here is 3735.19, within group SS is 6115.78 and the total SS is 9850.97. Now moving on, we have DF. DF stands for degrees of freedom. This is calculated slightly differently. For between groups, DF is the number of groups present in your data minus 1. I have 3 groups, so 3 minus 1, I have got 2. To determine this, Within groups, DF is the number of observations minus the number of groups, that is 42 minus 3 that is equal to 39. Then we have MS. MS stands for mean square. You can think it as the variance for each source of variation. To calculate this, we can simply divide the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom. Now moving on, we have F. F stands for F statistic. Here the F statistic is calculated as MS between the groups divided by the MS within the groups and it is equal to 11.90954. Now moving on, we have the F critic. F critic stands for F critical value. It is calculated easily by Excel or you can perform it manually by looking at the critical value table. So the F statistic is then compared with the F critical value. If the F statistical value is greater than the F critical value, we can conclude that the test is significant. Now moving on, we have the p-value. The probability of obtaining an F statistic as extreme as or more than the observed value assuming the null hypothesis is true. A small p-value that is less than 0.05 suggests that the significant differences between groups exist. As my p-value is more than the alpha level that is the 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, there is no difference between the means of the three groups. I hope guys this has helped you. Do let us know if you have any questions regarding this in the comment section below. Do like and hit the subscribe button of the channel. I will see you in the next video for sure. Till then, keep learning with Simply Learn. Thanks for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.